In this video, we're going to look at the expectation values for kinetic and potential energy for a hydrogen atom, and also use these to look at a concept called the Virial Theorem. So if we want to calculate the expectation value of potential energy, which the potential energy in the hydrogen atom is just the Coulomb force acting between the electron and the proton, which we have fixed at the origin here. So this is going to be our standard expectation value formula in spherical polar coordinates which is going to be integral from 0 to infinity r squared dr integral from 0 to pi sine theta d theta integral from 0 to 2 pi of d phi then psi star of nlm whichever psi star we want times the operator for potential energy, the minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r, the Coulomb potential, acting on the wave function psi nlm. Okay, so that's what the formula is. If we're looking at this specifically for the case of the 1s orbital, which I'm choosing not least of which because it is by far the simplest to calculate and the easiest integrals to do, we can look at that and say that psi 1s which in terms of the three quantum numbers is psi 1, 0, 0. It's going to be 1 over square root of pi, z over a naught, the Bohr radius, to the 3 halves, and then e to the minus z r over a naught. Reminding ourselves that z is the number of protons in the nucleus because this equation, these energies, these wave functions are all valid as long as there is one nucleus and one electron for an atom or ion. So this is valid for hydrogen, for helium plus, lithium two plus, etc. any other hydrogen-like atom. But we're going to look at it just for hydrogen, so our z is going to be 1. And the Bohr radius just being 0.529 angstroms, uh, or 0.529 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. So substituting that stuff in down here, we're going to have, look at this integral first, 0 to pi of sine theta d theta, integral from 0 to 2 pi of d phi, integral from 0 to infinity, now comes the r part. We have the r squared, which came from the volume element all the way out here. Then we're going to have um, the potential energy operator there's only multiplication in it, so there's no differentiation or anything like that. So all multiplication operations are commutative. So we can take psi star times psi first and then multiply times v at the end. So we can square psi first because this our psi here is real. So psi star psi is just psi squared when there's no imaginary part. And we're going to get 1 over pi from here. Um, z is going to be 1, so I'll just put in 1. 1 over a naught, that's going to be cubed. Then e to the minus, z being 1, so e to the minus r over a naught squared is going to be e to the minus 2r over a naught. And then our operator goes in last, which hopefully I can fit in before the end of my page division here, is just e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Okay, so that's all well and good. Um, there's no theta or phi dependence in the wave function for the 1s orbital. That's that would be that would not be the case for things like p or d orbitals, but for spherically symmetric orbitals like s orbitals, there is no theta or phi dependence. So we can integrate those out now. The integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi is just 2 pi minus 0 or 2 pi. The integral of 0 to pi of sine of theta d theta is going to be minus cosine theta and then minus cosine of pi is going to be 1 minus cosine of 0 is going to be minus 1 1 minus minus 1 is 2 so integrating those out gives us just a 4 pi when we have an isotropic angular function like that so then for our next line v of 1s if we know particularly that we're looking at the 1s orbital here it's going to be 4 pi, this part here, over 
we've got a pi here from this 1 over square root pi squared that we had. Then we have uh, 1 over a naught that gets cubed, 1 over Bohr radius cubed. We're going to have uh, the constants we can factor out from our potential energy operator, minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then we're going to do our integral with respect to r, which is the integral of 0 to infinity. And the part we left in is the 1 over r. So r squared times 1 over r gives us just an r. The squared is going to cancel out, leaving us just one power of r times e to the minus 2r over a naught dr. OK, then we quickly see that this pi cancels with this pi. This 4 cancels with that 4. So we need to also look at this integral here. If we look up in a table, we can find an integral that looks like integral of 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the minus ax with respect to x equals n factorial over a to the n plus 1. And the specific values we have here, making this or integral correspond to this one, so x equals r and n equals 1 and a equals 2 over a naught from our exponent up there in our exponential. Substituting that in, we're going to have v of our 1s orbital, our potential energy expectation value. It's going to be what's left is minus e squared, charge of the electron squared, over pi epsilon naught, and we have an a cubed, a naught cubed, Bohr radius cubed, times whatever our uh, evaluation of our integral is going to be. So n factorial, n is 1, 1 factorial is 1, so not particularly important that I include a factor of multiplying by 1 there, so I will not. Then a to the n plus 1 on a denominator is the same as the inverse of a to the n plus 1. So I'm going to take the inverse of a here, make that a naught over 2. And then this to the n plus 1 is going to be 2. So we're going to square each of those. We can notice that we've got an a naught cubed on a denominator, a naught squared on a numerator. That cancels, cube cancels, left with just one a naught on the denominator. And then this is going to give us the final result of minus e squared over 2 squared is 4, 4 pi epsilon naught a naught. And if you'll notice here, we have our energy in terms of the uh, quantum number n. For this case, 1 over n squared, our n is 1 for the 1s orbital. So this is just a 1. So our energy is, total energy is minus e squared over 8 pi epsilon naught a naught. And if you'll notice, this energy down here is equal to 2 times the expectation value for the total energy for the 1s orbital. So our potential energy is equal to 2 times the total energy. And what do we know beyond this? Well, we know that the expectation value of the kinetic energy plus the expectation value of the potential energy has to be equal to the total energy. There's only kinetic and potential energy. There's no other form of energy for us to hide. So these two have to add up to this total energy E. And whenever we have that, the value of V is 2 times the total energy equals E1s. That means we know that our kinetic energy then is equal to the negative of the expectation value for the energy. So we have our kinetic energy, we have our potential energy, we have potential here, we have kinetic here. So let's look at the ratio of these two now. So we have the ratio of it's not the color I wanted. Please be blue. Okay, thank you. 
ratio of potential over kinetic is just 2 times the energy, the total energy, over minus 1 times the total energy. So very quickly we see these two cancel here and we get that the ratio of our expectation value of potential energy over expectation value of kinetic energy is minus 2. And this result is the result of the virial theorem. And this is going to be true for all atoms and molecules. So it's going to be true at any value of n. It's going to be true for any single wave function of the hydrogen atom. It's going to be true for every wave function of the helium atom. It's going to be true for, for water, for benzene, for proteins. It's going to be true for any chemical system that the expectation value of the potential energy divided by expectation value of kinetic energy is going to give us this ratio of minus 2. This virial theorem will be true for any system in which the total potential energy is all coulombic. And in chemical systems, that's all we have. The total potential energy is just the coulombic interactions of protons and electrons. So th this was uh, an example to help us get more familiar with uh, calculating expectation values in spherical polar coordinates and for hydrogen atom wave functions. And the result we got is this nice virial theorem, which is not particularly useful right now, but I'll remind you of later down the road when we're looking at approximate wave functions for chemical systems, which we cannot solve exactly, which is going to be pretty much everything except the hydrogen atom. And this virial theorem is going to be a help to us to determine how good the approximations are when we cannot solve for wave functions and energies exactly.